Hey y'all, what's up? So uh, I was up there at the pier doing some straw fishing the other day, and apparently a lot of people don't know what straw fishing are or how to set up for it. I was talking to college, kid, college kids, and they were asking. So I'm gonna walk you through this real quick. The way I do mine, go to Walmart and buy a little flip-flop. They're about 98 cents. I'm gonna show you what that's for. Get a weight, I run the heaviest weight that they sell. The heaviest I could get was a four ounce. Then grab some hooks. These aren't um, big eye hooks, which means the hole here is small. It's a pain to get the line through. The bigger these are, the more they'll help you. I just stopped at Walmart and grabbed what they had. Then you need some straws. Hence, we call it straw fishing. I like fluorocarbon a lot. The reason I like fluorocarbon is it doesn't have stretch. Um, if, you're, if you already fish, you can just get this little part. I'll show you how to build these things. If you're not, if you're not really, you know, know the difference between monofilament fluorocarbon or um, braid you know I'll uh, explain this part to you like this mono has stretch fluorocarbon doesn't and whenever you're jigging and you're just going up and down whenever that fish hits it you want them to lock in you want to set that hook well when you're jigging you can't really set the hook so this with no stretch will set the hook a lot easier than you trying to actually hook the fish so what you want to do take your bottom just tie a double knot here's what I mean by a double knot take this piece to this piece it doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be pretty all this is doing is holding your weight you go around two or three times and you pull it tight that's it As long as that knot don't have any bubbles or anything like that, it'll hold that four ounce weight. There's a million other knots you can tie, a million other ways of doing it, knock yourself out. Some guys will put swivels on there. I just do it like that. Do is put my weight through, pull my weight back through the loop, and that's it. Right here, I cut it. I leave a little tag, nothing extreme. Okay, because those hooks have small eyes, what we're going to do is we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna use pliers. So, first thing is, if you don't have them cut, the easiest way to cut a straw is take a straw, put your hook into it, Alright, so what you want to do is you want to take your straw, put it in there. I just kind of pull it up a little bit. You'll see a notch. All that notch is for its cutting. And you can use stir straws. They'll actually fit on a little bit better. They won't be uh, so loose, so they won't slide up and down. It doesn't really bother me that much. It's an example. Right, so it's not the end of the world for me. It doesn't really bother me that much. But you want it to sit like that. So when you got it sitting there like that, you know, you just jig it. Well, what I do instead of doing that to every one of them is I'll just take it, put it up beside the straw, like that, take the scissors, cut it. There you go. These fish aren't that pig finicky. If they were, they wouldn't be eating straws. Don't know what to tell you. All right, then what you do, you can space them however you want. Uh, typically, I make one where they're pretty close together, and then I make one where they're fairly spaced out. So, I'll come up above the weight, and I will take it, and I don't really want to make the loop much more than what it takes to get the hook through. So, I kind of look at the hook, and I know when I pull this tight, that's about as big as I want it. Take it, take your weight end, take the end coming off your spool, put it together. Wrap around your finger, take it through, take it through, do it twice. The reason you want to do it twice and not once, get a hold of a bigger fish with one, a lot of times it'll just seem to roll. You can do it three, four, six times. I just like doing it too. I've never really had much of an issue with it folding in. And what I mean by folding in is if a fish hits it, pulling it tight. I like having that little bit of play there. Some guys don't. Some guys tie them straight down. 
that's kind of one of those things. Is what you feel is what you feel. What's the name of this knot? It's not a name to the knot. All right. Remember I was telling you about the eyes? Well, the eyes are small on this one. So all I do is I take a pair of pliers, and if you buy bigger eye holes or even bigger hooks, you won't have to do that. But I do. I was in a hurry the other day. They were biting, so I just grabbed a bunch of hooks. Put it through. Like so. Pop it through there. And you can see there's not a ton of space between where that goes in. And I pull it tight. And that's all I do. And now one thing you do want to make sure is if you're going to do one that long and you put it up here. And you want to make sure the next one you do you have enough space so that when you're jigging because this is going to go up and down. It's going to hit the bottom and it's going to go down. You don't want them hooking against each other. If you make it where it hooks it's not the end of the world. I tie one personally tight real close together and then I tie one spaced out. This is the one I'm going to tie spaced out. And what I'll do is I'll move it up and I'll move it to right here. You know, I've got a nice, you know, probably six inches. Hold it. So a dollar bill, fifty dollar, whatever you got on you, that will go six inches because that's what the U.S. currency is made on. All right, so I'll take it about right there. If I curl this up, and you see where I'm at. So off of that judgment, I'm probably four and a half inches. So what I'll do is I'll come up to about there, roughly, and I'll take some, and I'll pull some out. I'll do it about like that. Okay. And I'll tie my knot right there. And that gives me about, what, eight inches, nine inches, which is plenty. So since it's too small, I'll push that down. I'll take my straw, put my straw through. Recording, you can't be jumping all over the place. Now, the reason I was telling you about the flip flop, this I'll show. You do, I've only got two hooks. I've got a lot more to go. I'm gonna make this an 18 strand. You can put as many or as few hooks as you want. I would suggest putting at least four to six at a minimum. You can buy micro trees. The store bought ones, they just, they're too big. They, they just don't seem to work quite as well. But take your hook, stick your hook on here. Cause when you got 18 hooks, you got a lot of hooks. Wrap this up. Then all you do is you take this, you wrap it around like so, and you hook it in place. 
that way, whenever you go to take it off, all you do is unwrap it, unhook it, bring it on around, unhook your next one, and you're off. And you can fish. And if you just take this thing and wad it up, you're going to have hooks everywhere and you're not going to be able to fish with it. And those shoes are 98 cents, which is why I buy those. Those little flip flops are 98 cents, a dollar for two. That gives me enough for two hook for two uh, sets. So that's why I buy those. Or if you don't want to buy those, you can go buy noodles. You can go to Lowe's. They sell the black foam stuff that goes over pipes. That stuff works. But if you're going to work these things, you definitely want it. Um, the water temperature is around 70 degrees is what I like to fish these things, which is typically mid end April up till uh, what, Memorial Day weekend and usually a uh, week the week after Memorial Day is usually pretty much a guarantee to not really have much you get about three weeks of good fishing two well, anywhere from two to four weeks I mean it's fishing there's no definites but down here in Myrtle Beach that's kind of our our golden time so to speak but all right y'all that's it